Hey guys, welcome back to the other side of the coin. Two topics to talk about today. First of all, I want to talk about there, there seems to be a bit of a conundrum as to what sort of front three or the forward pack that we're going to use against Brighton, uh, considering the injuries and certain players that may not be available. And second thing that I want to talk about is all the different loans that's been taking place. So we've seen a whole heap of players that have come in. Now we're seeing a whole batch of players that are going out. So I want to talk about some of these stuff. So first of all, let's talk about this, you know, against Brighton, which is our first match coming up, um, you know, in a few days' time. And it's 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 interesting to talk about as to how we could sort of line up in the you know in the in the attacking uh, area. I'm not going to go through the whole lineup because I'll do a video later on about the whole um, lineup and what's going on, injuries and whatnot down the track uh, after the press conference, hopefully, and when we get to know a little bit more. But what we sort of know at the moment um, right now is Ziyech could be a bit of an injury cloud for the upcoming match. Um, you know, Kai Havertz has just come in, so whether he starts or not, I'm not really sure. Pulisic, we 100% know, is not starting. So, who could we possibly have in that sort of front three? If we play sort of 4-3-3 um, or 4-2-3-1, who could we possibly line up? So, here's my couple of options, and then I'll give my recommendation. I would, and I would love to know what you guys think as well, and uh, hopefully we get a good discussion about this. I feel, you know, if, if, Ziyech, uh, if Ziyech is fit, then he starts for me on the right wing. Um, and in that case, I would have Timo Werner in the striker position. And in the left wing, I would probably have Kalama Tanadoy, considering Pulisic is injured. Um, and, you know, if, if by any chance that Kai Havertz is able to play, then he may slot into the uh, right centre position in a 4-3-3. Only because I think there's some news going around that Kovacic might not be available for the first game because of some sort of suspension from the previous season and so, well, so on and so forth. So I'm not sure how true that is, but that would be my front three, Ziyech, Werner, Kalamut and Adoy. And um, you know, if Kajavets is fit, then Kajavets plays um, in, in the right side and Mason Mount on the left with Kante as the lone DM. Now, if, if Ziyech is not fit, then the way I would probably line up is Timo Werner playing as the left wing, uh, Giroud playing as the striker, uh, Tammy, of course, will come off the bench. And in the right side, I could either have Kalama Tanadoy, or if, if Kajavets is fit, then I would put Kajavets to start um, in, the, in the right wing area. But I would probably prefer Kalamut and because of the match fitness. He's played against Brighton a couple of weeks ago and he's already taken um, you know, part in the England under 20s, uh, under 21 squad as well. And he's done pretty well. So I would probably have it in that way. There's been some talks that Kajavet could possibly feature. Now, I don't know if I would, you know, out and out starting, it does need to, you know, get used to the system, get used to what Frank wants from him, you do a little bit more training. And I wouldn't mind seeing him, if he is fit, just come off the bench. So my personal preference, if Ziyech isn't injured, then it'd be Ziyech, Werner, Kalamatan Odoi. If Ziyech is injured, then it would be Kalamatan Odoi, um, Oliver Giroud, and Timo Werner. So let me know what your thoughts are around this particular um, front three, how, uh, you know, whether you would you know, see it that way or whether you would see it any other way. Uh, I think I think that is probably the way to go around against Brighton. And I think that's enough firepower for us to, to get the win against them. So let me know what your thoughts are. Second thing that I want to talk about is the whole to topic about all the players that are going out on loan. As I said, heaps of players have come in and now we're seeing a whole set of players that are probably going to start going out. So, first of all, uh, uh, tomorrow, the car tomorrow is very, very close to the Everton loan. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but the words are that this is probably happening. And for me, I think this is a fantastic opportunity for tomorrow. Everton was actually interested in tomorrow last season, but we ended up keeping tomorrow because David Luiz left and Frank Lampard ended up keeping him. But obviously throughout last season, there was a patch in the middle where he had fantastic combination with Zuma and then after that sort of fell off when Rudiger came on and Andres Christensen came on and then obviously Zuma took over. 
So yeah, he kind of fell off um, in, in the ranks. I think it's probably best for him to go out on a loan now and get that regular minutes now that Thiago Silva is in as well. So I don't think he's going to see much minutes in Chelsea. And it's perfect, you know, someone like Ancelotti would do wonders with him. You know, Ancelotti from that Italian background will absolutely teach him how to defend properly and defend with utter class. And in Everton, they've bought some really, really good uh, players, you know. Thomas Rodriguez, Ducore from Watford, Alan from uh, uh, Napoli. So they've got a mini project going there. That, this could be a fantastic opportunity for Tomori to, to do well there and still be part of an attacking team, but at the same time learn the defensive side of things as well from Ancelotti. And hopefully he can be, he can get tons of games. At the moment, I'm hearing that Everton's only fit centre back is Keane. So, you know, Mina and Holgate are not fit at the moment, so it's perfect for Tamari. He should get enough minutes and hopefully he can knuckle that position down and he can come back and perhaps take one of the positions uh, in Chelsea centre back next season. Michi Batshuayi is the next one. Uh, he's just scored a couple of goals for Belgium, which is fantastic. He's been tipped to go to Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace has the option of choosing one player from us. There was words that it was going to be Conor Gallagher and I was so thrilled for this particular player. I thought Conor Gallagher was a perfect move for him to Crystal Palace. I'm pretty sure he would have got minutes as well and it would have been a perfect opportunity for him to showcase his talent. But look, it may not be um, Conor Gallagher anymore. It probably will be Michi uh, you know, Someone like Crystal Palace is looking for more goals next season. Hopefully, Michi Batshuayi can go there and score a bundle of goals. He is tipped to sign an extension with us um, only because his contract is ending at the end of, uh, I believe, next season. So they don't want to lose him for you know free. So they want to extend his contract for one more season and keep him beyond 2022, I suppose. So hopefully, if he does well in Palace, then he can he can be he can he can be sold down the track. Um, next up, obviously, we've already known that Ethan Ampadu has gone to Sheffield United, which is a fantastic move. Uh, you know, check my video from, from yesterday, which you'll see all the details about that. Bakayoko is very close to uh, AC Milan, I believe. So that one will go through. Zappacosta is well, very, very close to Atalanta. And <laughs> Danny Drinkwater has uh, commented, has put a post in Instagram saying that he's glad to be back training in Chelsea, but yeah, he probably thinks that he's going to go out on a loan. So he's excited about his future, where he's going to go. So look, whole heap of loan activities are happening. It's exciting times. Um, you know, it, you know it'll, it'll be interesting to see how some of these loan players do when they go to other teams. So yeah, look out for that. So guys, if you've enjoyed this particular video, smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Thank you so much for all the people that have been subscribing in recent times. Um, I do appreciate all the love that you guys have been giving me in my channel. So, um, yeah, continue doing that and smash the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, see you.